Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Yeah, one thing I want to bring up today, and it's the end of 2010. We're going to be going back and looking at the year at the end of the week. We're going to go through all the technological advances, politics, what we've learned, things that have been become common knowledge that wasn't before. It's going to be interesting. We're going to spend some time this week working on that. Now, the one thing I, I saw John Stewart on The Daily Show, he made a point. Uh, what they're really talking about is the first responders— now there's responder nine eleven responders the military and uh, you know country de la fill in the blank they're out there they're responders to nine eleven I mean that was the excuse for this war on terror thing but the first responders the people that were damaged breathing in all that stuff that's it's it's a long issue but we're talking the eh, bitty baby amount of money they're gonna for their health care you know they inhaling all this stuff and they had a lot of health problems so you know John Stewart took this on as a cause regardless of what your issue is on this he made a very good point and let's go ahead and listen to him I want you to go ahead and we'll talk about it after we play this segment we begin tonight in Washington. Oh, this one's going to get you upset. Where Republicans, with a coming majority in the House and a greater presence in the Senate, are going to bring an end to the era of congressional moral bankruptcy. You need some people with principle in Washington who will stand up and say enough's enough. It means sticking ever more closely to the conservative principles that got us here. We have a certain philosophical principles that we believe in, and we think that those principles are superior to those. These are Republican senators. The aisle. And by friends, I mean principleless. Hearts. <laughs> so what is their core number one principle deal with the bush era tax cuts first or nothing else gets passed all 42 gop senators signed a letter to majority leader harry reid they vowed to prevent a vote on any legislative item until the tax issue is resolved that is inspiring when a party stands together there is nothing it can't prevent from getting done <laughs> I wonder what issues are of so little import that Senate Republicans will refuse to even vote on them until they are sure that the marginal tax rate on the top 2% of the richest Americans won't be raised from 36 to 39%. What can't we do until Uncle Sam promises not to hurt Daddy Warbucks? Don't ask, don't tell. Yesterday, the Senate rejected an effort to open debate on repealing that policy. Also, the DREAM Act, this bill, uh, would have offered a path to citizenship for some illegal immigrants who entered the U.S. as children. Also stalled a bill to provide health benefits for 9-11 first responders. <laughs> I get the other two, but since when does the Republican Party make 9-11 first responders stand over in the corner with the gays and Mexicans? <laughs> I can't believe it. By the way, the 9-11 responders bill is called the Zadroga bill. It's named for an NYPD officer who died as a result of breathing toxic dust at ground zero. And it would set up a $7.4 billion fund to treat illnesses arising from working at ground zero and compensate the sufferers for economic losses, a.k.a. the least we can do slash no-brainer act of 2010. <laughs> Since Republicans took to the floor to discuss the DREAM Act and took to the floor to discuss Don't Ask, Don't Tell, I can't wait to see them take to the floor to talk about why their party hates first responders. I know what it is. It's the calendars, isn't it, fellas? You don't like the calendars. Firefighter calendars. Huh. It appears no Republican senators even showed up to discuss their principled stand after Schumer and Menendez. Perhaps, maybe... The Republicans were in New York administering health care personally. No, they're not there. Maybe they were at the big game. No, they were not there. Maybe they were in the frozen tundra. No, barren as ever. Of course, the Republicans wouldn't be so cowardly as to not vote for the bill without justifying their actions. Just cowardly enough not to do it on camera. Wyoming Senator Mike Enzi explained in a Sunday op-ed that his real concern was proper oversight of money already spent on 9-11 workers. $475 million of which he claims has gone missing, saying the nation can't afford careless spending no matter how well-intentioned. Mismanagement, waste, unacceptable. Now, by the way, the bill they were going to vote on actually fixes that problem, but just like in May 2008, when the Pentagon announced it couldn't account for $15 billion that had disappeared somewhere in Iraq, 
By the way, what did Mike Enzi, tireless fiscal watchdog, say in June, one month later, when he was asked to vote for more Iraq funding? I believe he said, this isn't a perfect bill. The fact remains, however, that we need to fund our troops, so I will support the supplemental bill. <laughs> Unless any of those troops are 9-11 responders, in that case, f*** those guys. <laughs> and by the way, Mike, bad news. You know, all of our troops in Afghanistan and Iraq are technically 9-11 responders. <laughs> Sorry, not the first responders but the second and the third. So guess what, Republicans? Here's the deal. You're, we're the only party that understands 9-11 and its repercussions monopoly ends now. So, no more co-opting 9-11 imagery to get yourselves elected. No more using 9-11 as the date when magically all your policies became right. I'm concerned with these policies. The administration has moved us back to a pre-9-11 mentality. And that failed in the past, it will again. Yes. No more using 9-11 to micromanage Manhattan's zoning decisions. It's a very bad idea to build that mosque and, and center that close to ground zero. It is, in fact, uh, a, 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 an affront to virtually all the families who lost loved ones at 9-11. Right. <laughs> no using 9-11 as an excuse for why your Bush tax cuts never stimulated the economy in the first place. Yeah. I wish we'd had a smaller debt. I wish we hadn't been attacked on 9-11. Or 9-11 as an excuse to do what you were going to be doing anyway. After 9-11, Saddam's regime posed a risk that the world could not afford to take. No more using 9-11 as a price point. A fundraiser Wednesday night in Palo Alto, California. Volunteers for Giuliani plan to ask donors for contributions of $9.11, or of course, 9-11. Of course. You know what, Republicans? You use it so much, if you don't owe the 9-11 responders health care, at least you owe them royalties. <laughs> so here's a little tribute. Here's a little tribute. A tribute. Yeah. We were building up to it. Here's a little tribute we put together to some of those illustrious Republican senators who, when it has served them in the past, have found comfort and advantage in invoking the heroes of 9-11. And yet, when it came time to return the favor, delivered their message loud and clear. No. So here's to the 9-11 non-responders. I know that many of my friends and colleagues who were here on that horrific day feel a very deep and personal debt to the heroes of September the 11th. Mr. Cornyn. The uncommon courage of first responders called to duty on that day reflects the steadfast spirit of our great nation. Mr. Grassley. And then they vote we no for the health the heroism and bravery of the first responders. Mrs. Hutchison. Men and women searching and clearing the World Trade Center site. Work day and night. Ms. Snow. The firefighters who gave their lives, the firefighters who've worked day and night, the volunteers who have gone in there. Mr. Hatch. It showed that under the worst of circumstances, we will come to the aid not only of our friends and neighbors, but to complete strangers. Mr. Bunning. Each moment of September 11th, 2001 is forever etched on our minds. Mr. Enzi. GOP plus 9-11 ends 2010. This is, you know, such a good point that was made. You know, this is a, a I, I want to I applaud uh, John Stewart's efforts on this for picking a very good example of being able to, you know, give a little doink to the GOP because this is what was happening. You could not watch a a campaign commercial, have them speak, certainly in the debates during the presidential election cycle in 08, for more than five minutes, or five seconds, without them invoking 9-11. Well, when it came down to, you know, the 9-11 responders, you know, they made a big... Now, what happened was, they passed it. He got it passed. New York Times this weekend came out. Yep, the Senate passed this. Why? Because John Stewart was going to make sure they could never bring up 9-11 again. Oh, they didn't want to lose that one.